with Tom DeLora. We're both part of the engineering staff here at CAD Dimensions. Before we get started today, obviously we're talking about uh, a new product, SolidWorks PCB. We'd like to get to know our audience a little bit. So I have a few polls here uh, just to get an idea of, of what you're currently doing for PCB design. So for the folks that are in attendance, uh, do you currently have PCB design software? I'll give you a few seconds to vote and then I'll uh, close the poll and show you what we're looking at here. All right. Looks overwhelmingly a majority of you have an existing tool. Let's take a look at what type of tool you're using. Now, obviously, there's a lot of players in uh, in this world. Uh, just want to get an idea of uh, what types of tools are being used. Uh, I'll give you a moment to, uh, to choose here. Uh, most of you, all right, I'm going to go ahead and close that up. Looks like we have a, a decent cross-section. We've got some uh, users of pads, Ultium Designer, which uh, will have some some uh, tools that will integrate with that existing tool, and then uh, the all-encompassing other category. Uh, last question has to do with the collaboration between your SOLIDWORKS and your PCB program. Okay, Is collaboration important to you? If you're a SOLIDWORKS user, maybe you're not a SOLIDWORKS user. Let's kind of see where this one goes. All right, give another second here. All right. So it looks like uh, for most of you, collaboration is important. So uh, we'll go off of that and uh, kind of tailor our presentation today uh, to talk about those things. So SOLIDWORKS PCB was released on uh, July 1st for the general public. So uh, CAD Dimensions, this is our, our first look for our customer base. Uh, a couple of housekeeping issues before we get started. If you have any questions during the presentation, if you could please just post them in the question section of GoToWebinar. At the end, we'll go ahead and take as, uh, as many of the questions as we can and uh, get back to those that we can't answer any questions. Obviously, we only have 30 minutes today. We're going to give you a look of uh, SOLIDWORKS PCB, and I'm sure there will be more questions about the full breadth of the product and all the technology behind it, and uh, we can certainly get answers to those questions as quickly as possible. So curtain call here, introducing SOLIDWORKS PCB, uh, a partnership with Altium. Uh, see several of you uh, were using Altium, Altium Designer. So this is a collaboration between Altium and SOLIDWORKS to develop a product called SOLIDWORKS PCB. So we're excited uh, to have the technology partner in Altium behind the product um, proven. Um, great, uh, great start instead of jumping in the market with something brand new. Two new products, uh, SOLIDWORKS PCB, which is a standalone product does not run inside of SOLIDWORKS necessarily. Um, you'll be able to do your work in that product and make your connection to SOLIDWORKS from that product. For those of you using Altium Designer currently, there is also a product called the PCB Connector from SOLIDWORKS that will allow you to connect your existing Altium Designer product to SOLIDWORKS so that you can uh, lay out your boards and bring those boards into SOLIDWORKS for edits and get that back and forth. And we're going to show you a little bit of that today. A little bit more about the products, uh, the standalone, the connector product, kind of why SOLIDWORKS jumped into this, uh, this industry. Um, you know, we kind of had a missing a hole in our, our portfolio. When you look at Mechatronics design, you know, we could do uh, system level electrical work, um, we could do all the plastic parts, but we could only import the PCB using uh, circuit works and some of the tools. And 
we really didn't get into the design of that. So this gives us that complete suite. Uh, with the IoT strategies of a lot of organizations today, this helps us to support that. It also, when it comes to our electrical product, you know, a lot of times we're running harnesses and, and wiring up two existing boards, and we kind of, again, had that hole of getting the board design uh, created and brought into 3D very easily. It also fits into the SOLIDWORKS ecosystem very, very well. Um, you'll see just below that, taking the ECAD information into simulation to run maybe a flow study or a thermal simulation. And to, to back it all up, it's used by many of our largest customers, illustrated today that many of you on here are already using an Altium product. So what does it have? Well, it has schematic capture, traditional PCB layout, 3D visualization directly in the PCB tool. You don't necessarily have to be in SOLIDWORKS to visualize what the board is going to look like in 3D. You're going to see a little bit later how we get the board in SOLIDWORKS to tie in the mechanical. Uh, that collaboration is important. Um, being able to shape the board, size the board, and do all of your mechanical work around the board and board components, as well as any downstream. The integration with electrical, you know, making those wire connections uh, important as well. And when I say ecosystem ready, here's just a, a perfect illustration of that. This is a board designed in SOLIDWORKS PCB, wired up in SOLIDWORKS electrical, and rendered in SOLIDWORKS Visualize. Okay, all of these products, once we get it into SOLIDWORKS, uh, you can take advantage of a tool that you're very familiar with uh, to do everything else. Some of the key features, I already mentioned this once before, but proven technology with the Altium name, the Altium technology backing it. Uh, the interface was inspired by SOLIDWORKS. Uh, you'll see that as we introduce that a little bit later on. You know, the ECAD, MCAD inter integration, you'll see this. Um, going back and forth with edits and changes uh, to bring the mechanical and the double E teams together uh, is very important. The interface, uh, some programs that are out there today, when you go from schematic editing to PCB layout to even just 3D design and visualization, the environments are very, very different. You'll see a unified environment between each of those. Real-time component supplier links. We can go out and connect to the supplier, get updated pricing information, updating part number. You'll see some of that uh, as we go through. Uh, and then real integration with SOLIDWORKS files. We're not using neutral formats to collaborate with SOLIDWORKS. We're using real SOLIDWORKS files to do this. So SOLIDWORKS PCB is a complete suite of electronic design tools, and the connector is an add-in for Altium Designer. That add-in is what creates that connection to SOLIDWORKS to push and pull the boards into existing mechanical designs. So what we're going to show you today, we want to start off obviously at the, the beginning of the road here, the schematic capture. Uh, Tom's going to introduce uh, schematics, the interface, and so on. Uh, we're going to then get into PCB layout. I'm going to take Tom's schematic. We're going to lay out the PCB. From there, we're going to talk about some of the PCB project outputs and the availability, availability of those outputs. But we're going to wrap all of our conversation with SOLIDWORKS and that mechanical collaboration. Okay, An important piece is being able to utilize SOLIDWORKS in the middle as well. So Tom? Uh, let's start with schematics. Let's see what SOLIDWORKS PCB can do. Okay, thanks, Kevin. All right, so I'm going to start us off just kind of introducing what uh, what SOLIDWORKS PCB uh, offers us as far as starting with just a user interface and then building up that schematic design that we can start to design our PCB with. Um, so. Looking at our interface, it's going to feel a lot like SOLIDWORKS, a lot like your office products. We, we still have our uh, command manager and ribbon bar up top uh, where we can sort through uh, what, what side panels we want to view, uh, any shortcuts that we want to use, and then our project settings. So where I'm going to start is on my home page. I'm actually going to create a new PCB project. 
you can see that we have some templates that we can work off of. Uh, for today, I'm just going to use a blank PCB template project, and we'll call this one our PCB webinar, and this will be live. All right, so I'll go ahead and create that new uh, project. And what it's going to do is populate a project inside my project side panel. I currently have no documents that are tied to this project. So what I'd have to do is come into my project tab in my command manager. I'm going to add a new schematic. So the options that I have here are to add a new schematic or add a PCB. And Kevin's going to show you uh, adding that PCB in a little bit here. So with my schematic, it's going to bring up a new page for me. And what I can do with this page is go through some general properties of this. So if I have a template design that I want to use for a schematic page, if it's a small design or a larger design, I might want to be able to scale my page um, so it's a little easier to print or get more components onto it. So we can use our settings just to set up the size of that page. So I'll use an A-size page for this project. We'll go ahead and hit OK for that. As I look down at my title block, and I'll zoom in here, I can see that I have some placeholders that are uh, waiting to be populated in this page. So I can use my document properties and go to my parameters. And from here, I can actually give my title of, these, of the sheet. Um, so I can call this my webinar schematic. And it's going to be drawn by Tom. I can go ahead and hit OK there. And what it will start to do is fill in my uh, webinar scheme. And if I chose to put who drew this, I could put that information in that title block as well. All right. So what I want to do now is start to put some components onto my schematic. And I have a miscellaneous library of, of device symbols over on my library side panel. Um, I also have a library of different connectors on my side panel. So I can start to look through and, and see what components that I have or what symbols I have that I can use in my schematic. But for this project, I actually want to add a new library. So I might have downloaded a library from a customer um, or somebody sent me that says, these are the parts that I need. So for my project, which is going to create a board for a stepper motor, I can actually grab the library and hit open. And what this does is add a new, new library that has just the components that I care about for this project. All right, so these are going to be the project-specific components. So I'm not continuously searching. It's almost like adding a filter to a search to say this is what I need for this project. All right, so I'll start by bringing in a component. And all I'm doing here is dragging and dropping to the middle of my page. All right, I'll continue placing a couple components here. Again, a drag and a drop. If I double click, it's going to place me in uh, component place mode. So it's going to allow me to keep placing components until I'm done with it. I also have a couple shortcut keys when I'm placing components. I can hit my X key to quickly flip that component. And as I zoom in here, you'll see that the flip doesn't alter the text or doesn't flip it so it's un un uh, unreadable. All it's doing is flipping our bottom axis. And the Y key is going to do the same. So my one pin's at the bottom now. If I hit the Y key, my one pin's going to be at the top. Because I double-click that component to place it, I'm going to continue placing it. If I right-click, it'll end that command. All right. So the other, uh, the other shortcut key I have when I'm placing my components is the space bar. So if I wanted to bring this capacitor in, I can hit the space bar, and that's going to rotate my capacitor 90 degrees. All right, so we're trying to get these components in as quickly as possible and as organized as possible by using some snap features to keep everything on the same lines. All right, so with that, I'm going to jump to a document that has a, uh, a pretty populated schematic sheet. I'm just going to bring that into my project. All right, so I have this populated sheet. I can see my components are inside, of, inside my schematic space. Um, I'm missing a couple components, though, uh, specifically my grounds and my, uh, my VCC in this, in this situation. So if I go to my Home tab, I have a Power Port option inside my circuit elements. And what I want to use is the ground symbol, 
just to ground this capacitor and this resistor. And you'll see my X turns red when I'm at a connection point, so that's making a connection for me. And if I go back into my PowerPoint, I'll add my power source here. I'm just going to hit the tab key to bring up my properties. And this works across the program, so anything that has properties, the tab key will bring those up. So I'll go ahead and put a 3-volt power supply up top here, and that looks good. All right, so if anyone has noticed that as I brought my components in, everything came in with a mark number, so that C or the RV or the U, so it has some sort of ref des, um, but all everything has a question mark after it. So the software is intelligent that it knows that there's multiple components in here, but it doesn't actually start to assign those numbers until you're done designing. So if I'm happy with where my components are placed right now, I can come into my, uh, my tools menu, and from annotate, I can annotate the schematic. And it's going to give me a couple options of how I want to annotate the schematic. All right, so we can see all the components that I have with my question marks after it. And it's going to ask me, how do I want to process these? Do I want to work across and then down? Do I want to go from the bottom up or from the right to the left? I'm going to keep it at cross down. So I'm going to read from left to right, top to bottom. All right. And it's going to prompt me to do an update to this. So everything that was a question mark, all 18 components, are now going to have a designator or a ref des applied to it based on the position in the schematic. All right. So this is giving me a proposed change list. What the software has built in is this engineering change order to make sure that it's being validated and verified before we actually push um, these, these updates to the final project. So I can look at this, verify that this is going to become C1, C2, and so forth. I can validate those changes. We get the status that it's checked. And now I can execute those changes so they're done inside the software. All right. So if I go back into my software, now based on the location on the page, they're going to automatically update those ref deses for me. And I could annotate this multiple times. So if I move my um, capacitor down here, I should see the update happening up top. So I can re-annotate. Re I can update my changes. Oops. Go this way. Update. As <laughs> I select them, that's my issue. So I'll go ahead and select the ones that I want to make changes to. We'll update the change list. And then we can populate that across. All right. Cool. All right. So the, uh, the next step I want to do inside my schematic is start to draw my connection. So I want to show how these are actually being wired together on our board. I'll go back into my home tab for this. And where I can insert a part, I can also insert wires from this home tab. So my wires are going to show me my connection points and where they're going to and from. So if I wanted to draw a wire, all I'm doing is left clicking to create a bend. And when I see that red X, it means I'm at that connection point, and my wire is going to stop, stop drawing for me. So it's trimming right at that point. What's nice about the software is that it has sticky wire technology built into it. So if I move my capacitor for here, my wires are going to come with that capacitor. So once that connection point is made with that red X, that, con that connection is going to stay. The wires are going to follow as that capacitor moves. All right. So I just want to jump ahead into a completed scheme here where I have my I have a, a bus called out and I have my wires numbered and named and labeled and all those nets are now called out with some identifier. So I'm going to bring this into my project and I'm going to use this completed scheme to actually run some reports. So looking at my scheme here, I can um, verify using some design rule checks how this is being put together, if I have any floating wires, uh, if something isn't connected. So in my project settings, I can look at my project options. And what this gives me is all the types of error reporting I have for a schematic. Um, and what level of scrutiny pretty much I want to give to that error or that warning or if I don't 
worry about that in my design, I can say, do not report on this. So we can see we have a whole list that is built into the software. Um, any violation is going to be caused based on our connections or a connection matrix to say, when is there an error, when is there no report. So I can set up all these options up front and save it out to a template. And then what I can do is I can actually compile my uh, schematic here, so compile my board. All right. And what that compile is going to do is populate my messages, and it's going to show me any warnings or errors that I have on my schematic. So if I double click on any of these, I can see that my, my net for my direct here has no driving source to it. So the pin that it's connecting to is missing a, a source or missing that connection point. So all it's giving me are these warnings of something I have to clean up inside my schematic. And I'm doing that through the compile function. All right. So before I uh, pass it over to Kevin, um, who's going to use these components in my schematic to place it on a PCB, I want to give him the actual PCB that I'm, or actual uh, board outline that we're going to be using for our design. So I'm going to jump into SolidWorks here. And I currently have this part file open for that stepper motor that I mentioned. So this is the project that we're building. And I can see that I have a stepper motor, just part file, inside of here. What I want to do is create a new board based on my project. So with my add-in turned on, so if I come into my add-ins, I can see down below I have SolidWorks PCB 2016 add-in turned on. I'm going to create a new board assembly. And I'm going to do it based on this webinar live project that I started. All right. What that's going to do is launch a new assembly for me. So I now have an assembly based on my project name that gives me this generic board outline. All right. This is the outline that, that I want to apply to that stepper motor that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new assembly. And I'm going to use my stepper motor as a baseline. I'm going to insert my board here as well. All right. So with a couple quick mates, I'm going to mate my board to my stepper motor. And I'll use a couple just width mates here just to get it centered um, onto my motor. So we'll grab this edge and this edge. And we'll grab our board edges as well. All right. So I'm just centering this onto my motor. Oops, if I select with here, there we go. So we'll center this like so. Cool. So I can see that the default board that came in is a bit larger than the motor that I have here. So what I want to do is actually edit that board outline. And that's what I'm going to be pushing back over to Kevin so he can design all his components that are going to perfectly fit the shape and design of our part or of our assembly. So I'm going to take this board extru extrusion, and I'm actually going to edit that sketch. Go ahead and save that new assembly. So I want to edit this sketch, and I want that sketch to be based on the contours of my stepper motor. All right, and I want to just clean this up a little bit. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to trim out those old entities of that default board. So that perfect square that came in by default, I don't want to use that. I want to use the edges of my motor. So I'll go ahead and exit out that sketch. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to make sure that my sketch has closed entities first. So we'll just verify that. Oh, I left one line there. Look at that. So we'll go ahead and delete him out. We'll exit out of our sketch. We'll exit out of our part. And now I can see that that board, even though my mates are a little screwy because I did that with mate, I can see that my board is updated. All right. So now if I go back into that subassembly board, what I can do for Kevin is actually push this board. So I can call it my original board design. And I can post that to Kevin who can go in and actually take this shape and start to lay out my, my components from the schematic. 
All right. So what we can do inside that schematic uh, capture is use a pretty simple interface that we're already used to. So we're looking for functionality that's built into a tab that's built into our command manager. We have libraries of components that we can either download or arrange into sub-libraries. So it's going to make it easier to pick these components that we need for specific projects. And then we have our intelligent design rules. So we can set up our rules for our project that it's not going to allow us to make some mistakes just by missing a connection point or having a hanging wire. We're going to have everything that's going to pass the design rule check. So by the time we go to manufacture this or produce the model, it's going to have the integrity of our design. All right. I'm going to pass it back over to Kevin to, uh, to start to lay out our PCB uh, design. Thanks, Tom. So Tom just completed the schematic. And if we look at the environment for the PCB design, uh, it's going to look the same. Uh, when I talk about this idea of a unified environment, whether I'm in the schematic or the PCB layout, the tools just change, it, not, the, not the whole software. Uh, the toolbar at the top now has the controls and the tools specific for doing PCB design. All I have to do with my existing project, and I've already done that here, is add new to project PCB. And that's what gets me going. Now, how do I make the connection to SOLIDWORKS to get Tom's shape? You can see I already have that shape currently, but making that connection is very easy because inside of SOLIDWORKS PCB, you'll have the PCB connector. This is the piece that would get added to Altium as well. The PCB connector says, OK, what's been going on with the push-pull in this project between the mechanical and the board design? And you can see updated board shape, and you're able to pull those changes in. We're going to show some of those live here in just a moment. So now that we have the board in and ready to go, Tom's completed his schematic, how do we start to make those changes appear in the PCB design. Well, first thing we want to do is we want to import those changes from the schematic. Tom showed you the ECO process, keeping track of everything that's changing along the way. Well, same thing happens here. Tom added all these components to the schematic don't exist to the PCB, and I can get a true look at what that is. When I tell the software to go ahead and execute those changes, it's going to go ahead and grab the associated footprint for those components for the PCB. And you'll notice here, just off to the right of my project, is all of the components that Tom placed on his schematic. Now, it's up to me to position those and place those where I want those on the board. Now, I can do this. I'm just going to grab them all and kind of drag them here. Uh, it's very simple. I can drag these one by one. You can see uh, the connection lines between uh, the individual components showing you the pin uh, adjustments that are there. Uh, as far as positioning, uh, there's some nice feedback that you get as you're dragging and dropping components in. If there's some sort of interference, you're able to see that interference as you're dragging it. Uh, also clearance. Uh, you're going to be able to see that. Now let's talk about clearance and, and some of the rules associated with laying out the PCB. Tom showed you the design rules essentially for a schematic. Well, there's a whole series of design rules for the PCB as well. So everything from uh, the solder mask to the silk screen to component placement and positioning, uh, trace widths, all of that is set up in what comes as predefined uh, rules, but you can also create your own rules. Here's an example. I added a rule called width power that says, you know, when I have anything in a net uh, for uh, two different net types, let's say I wanted, uh, you know, certain nets to have certain widths, and I can pick those nets, and I can then say, okay, these nets are going to be this max width, this preferred and so on. And I create a rule that belongs to this project that when I run my rule check, it's going to control what happens with the components. Now, you can see here that I'm doing this work in, in two dimensions. However, I can, just with a keystroke on my keyboard, go ahead and see this and visualize this in three dimensions as well. So all I have to do 
is uh, go ahead and turn it into 3D. You'll, you'll see what's represented with CAD models, and I'll have the ability to go ahead and drag and move those components right here in the three-dimensional space as well. So another uh, nice way to view and visualize what's going on. Very easy for me also to pop back. Now let me just zoom in a little bit here. If I wanted to take a component to a different layer, um, I, as I'm dragging the component, I can go ahead and hit a keystroke on the keyboard, and this will actually pop it to a different layer. Now how do I know what I'm dealing with as far as a PCB in the stack? Well, we have a layer stack manager. This layer stack manager allows me to either work with presets. In this case, there's a bunch of presets preloaded, two, four, six, eight, many layers with multiple planes. Or I can manually go through here and make some adjustments to the thicknesses, materials, and so on directly in here. Uh, you can start to work with uh, drill pairs and layer pairs all in this layer stack manager. And this is what is going to help us to determine what we're dealing with here. So dragging and dropping and positioning them is, is one thing. Once we get them all positioned, uh, we're looking at the, the connection lines and now the ability to start running some of the uh, connections here. So the routing functionality is, uh, is what replaced all of those schematic tools that you saw before. So there's a couple different ways to start routing. I'm going to use what we call the interactive routing. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit further here to get what I'm looking for. And uh, the interactive routing is very simple. Uh, you know, it basically follows your cursor, um, adds, adding the trace based upon the rules that I have. Remember, I had a rule that set the width uh, that I wanted to use for uh, a certain uh, trace type. And notice the corners that you're seeing here. I can do things like uh, hitting uh, shift space to change the corner type. If I get a, a radius corner and wanted to change the elbow direction, I could certainly do that as well. Uh, we're going to stick with a, a standard corner here and bring it down and make its connection uh, to an existing location on the board as well. If I happen to hold down control and just double click on a connection, it will auto route for that particular item. So that's kind of nice. You can auto route based upon a, uh, a particular pad here. When it comes to things that are on both sides of the board here, I need to route between this and a component on the other side. All I have to do as I'm routing is go ahead and hit a little key on the keyboard, which it happens to be the plus sign to change layers. And I could go ahead and make an adjustment to where I put the via. It automatically adds the via. And I'm able to make connections on both sides of the board. You'll notice at the bottom of the interface that there is uh, a list of the layers that we have. And I mentioned the layer stack manager. Um, but this not only includes the layers for our stack, but also specialty layers like uh, solder layer information, drill layers. These are all specialty layers that I can control and work with. If I were to, to click on these, I can turn on and off any layers, control the colors, um, really uh, see what I want to see to the, the PCB design. Okay. Hotkeys are very important uh, in the software. Uh, if I wanted to, uh, let's see here, run multiple components here, or multiple pads at the same time, um, I could go ahead and easily hit, uh, hit my H key, hit my H key one more time, hit my M key, and that automatically brings me right to multiple routing. So there's a lot of tools built into this. And I'm just going to route a few things just to show you some of the uh, technology for hugging and pushing uh, existing traces. Um, we have control over how it reacts when you come in contact with existing traces as I start and change existing traces. See how this hugs around an existing corner? Um, those are optional settings on how you want that to react as you make a trace and make some adjustments. Now, at some point in time, you want to get a, a full component routed. I could just take a component, uh, tell it I want to route the uh, entire component, and uh, this will take all of the 
pads and connections on that component. And you'll notice my messages section off to the right here. It's going to show me what I've routed. I've essentially routed all of the connections to that particular component. Now, in some cases, you want to provide a keep out area. Well, I could go ahead and create a keep out. I might create one. In this, in this case, I'm on the uh, bottom layer of the board. But let's go ahead and uh, go to the top layer as well. And we'll create another keep out area there. And uh, let's see, we'll do the same, do a full circle. Because we can use also the auto route can be used uh, to auto route all components. So here, keeping the keep out area, uh, we can go ahead and tell the system to auto route all of the connections. Now, remember those rules we were talking about? I also get a quick little status report that says, OK, Based upon everything we have going, here's how the routing, different routing widths we're dealing with, uh, routing styles, clearance rules. It gives me kind of a little report here. If I say route all, the system's going to go ahead and try to route all the components uh, as necessary, following all the rules that I desire. Okay. At the end of this. We're going to have a PCB that we may have to make some manual adjustments to. We may uh, you know, auto route some, manually route some. But here we are with the final design in this case. What am I going to do? I'm going to go back to my design rules. I'm going to do what Tom did with the schematic and compile everything. So we're going to run our design rule check. So remember all those list of rules? This is where it's going to run it in a batch. We're going to go ahead and run the design check. And you'll notice in my messages that I have four rule violations. Now, as I'm looking through the rule violations, I can see what the violation is. I know exactly silk to silk means that I probably have a, uh, a silk text too close to something. If I select on that particular item, it takes me to it. And I can make an adjustment and make some movements either to the trace or the overlay to help that out. When I run the design rule check again, we'll see what my results are. In this case, there's zero. From here, how do we get this into SolidWorks? OK, we mentioned that before. We just go right to the PCB connector. And we do a push in this case. OK, added my components to the board. And we'll go ahead and post that. It's going to go ahead and process all the board data, push it all to the server where I can pull it down on the SOLIDWORKS end. So let's go into SOLIDWORKS and take a look. Here I am, same board that Tom was working with. Let's go ahead and open up the subassembly, which is the board and its components. We have our PCB add-in inside of SOLIDWORKS. And you can see that new changes have been detected. We've added components to the board. Well, I can view those changes by hitting View Changes. And I can see all the components that need to be added. If I select on any of those components, what's great is it will actually show me, me rotate the, the component. OK, get it somewhere here. I should get a preview of the component on the board. See it flashing there? I can easily right click, check all, and accept all the changes. And the software is going to synchronize between the PCB design software and your mechanical software so you can stay in the interface that you desire. Okay. So when we look at the PCB layout, I want you to remember the unified environment. It's not different when you're creating a schematic and you're laying out the PCB. The environment's the same. Shortcuts are the same. How we work and pan and zoom and rotate are all the same. The 2D and 3D integration, not only can we have 3D visualization in SOLIDWORKS PCB, but we can push that information into SOLIDWORKS and do back and forth updates as well. And then the design rule checks, not only out of the box, but the ability to customize and create your own rule checks. So Tom's going to take you into PCB project outputs now. And uh, just give me a 
second. All right, there we go. So the final thing here, and uh, and I know we said uh, we would try to keep this to a half hour, so I'll, uh, I'll I'll speed through this this final push and pull that Kev Kev kind of introduced already. Um, so he has this board inside the three D space. So our components were added as those library components linked to our schematic symbol, and all this is a linkage that's happening inside the software. So from my schematic symbol. If I take this board, I can see that I have a, a 2D footprint that is going to be used inside of our PCB, and our 2D footprint is linked to a 3D model that is getting pulled into SolidWorks. So with my model inside of SolidWorks, I can continue to make changes both on the mechanical and on the um, 2D side, on the electrical side. So Kevin had mentioned that he has a, um, a keep out area in the middle. And the reason he had that keep out area was if I look at my main assembly, this stepper motor is going to have a, uh, a drive shaft that's going to come through the middle of our component here. So I really don't want any components to be taking up the space in the middle. So what I can do is look at my board outline part, so the part of this, of this component, and all I'm going to do is edit that part, and I want to create a sketch on my board, all right? And what I want for that sketch, so I'm in my sketch mode here, is I want to convert the entities of the hole that's going to be driving that, um, that location for the, for the uh, shaft to come through. So I'll go ahead and cap that off like that. I'm going to create a feature that's going to be an extruded cut, and we're just going to go through the board here, all right? So I'll go ahead and save that. And I'm making that at the assembly level because I want to be using the pieces of my assembly. So now if I go save, and we'll update, and if I go back into my PCB webinar live part, I can see that that hole is going to be there, and I now have the ability to push and pull information again. So I want to push this board with the, uh, with the shaft hole involved in it. So I can go ahead and push that. If I go back into my PCB, I can look at my SOLIDWORKS PCB connector. I see that there's been new changes detected. I can view those changes, which is going to be this new cut. And if I accept that change, I'm now going to have issues with how this was laid out. So this is going to force a design change because now I have routes, so I have copper and I have vias that are going through this hole. But this is telling me that there's no longer space here that I can do a route. So it's going to require me to start making some changes to my design to allow for that hole to take place. All right, so I can start to select my via, try to move it, try to open up space inside of that design. And this can go back and forth as many times as we need to to make sure that our routes are going to be accurate and our board is going to fit the design of our model. The final thing I wanted to show, and again, Kevin mentioned this, is running our design rule check at this point I can run my check, and I can see if I have any errors. So for me, I know I have errors because I'm going to have a whole bunch of shorts, and I'm going to have a whole bunch of clearance issues because I'm routing through geometry that doesn't exist. So this is going to force me to say I'm not ready to complete this project. I have to go back through and actually clean up my design. The final output that we get from our, from our design, so now we have our integrated design, if I go to my project, I can generate outputs. And these are going to be the pieces of information that everyone else outside of our design is looking for. So if we're uh, sending this off to be manufactured, our designer is probably going to be looking for a Gerber file or any other type of industry standard to fabricate the actual board based on our layout and based on our model. We also have our bill of materials that we can generate. Um, I'll go ahead and generate a Gerber file here. Any schematic prints to help identify how the board is, is designed, or maybe our uh, PCD prints just to understand the layout, um, and then any design rule checks and electrical checks that we're running. So what I can do is generate all those. It's going to bring it into a configuration file, and that's what I can push out. Now, I failed my design rule check, so that generation is not going to work. But that is the information that we can now output and send off to whoever needs this or whatever file types uh, our manufacturer fabricators looking for. All right. So that 
TCB and SolidWorks link is constantly happening. They're talking to each other, so as soon as I say push, it's going to give me information on my TCB side or on my SolidWorks side. Same with pull. So if Kevin's mid, midway through design and I'm the mechanical guy in SolidWorks, I can pull the information that he's at and start to plan my design a little bit better before, I'm, before I, uh, I, I don't have to wait for him to complete his entire design before I even get started. The output formats, so any file type that you're looking to uh, get out of the software, we offer pretty much all industry standards um, for, for those format types. And finally, we have that uh, reporting. So I think we've mentioned that in every, every segment of this webinar, is that ability to run reports and to re run design rule checks, to have everything in a single source is going to make this pretty powerful for your design process. And with that, again, I apologize for uh, we're about 15 minutes long here. Um, we're, we're clearly excited about the uh, about the product and and couldn't keep our mouth shut for uh, for just a half hour. <laughs> so yeah, we point, understand uh, that. Uh, yep, go ahead, guys. We we understand that uh, we've only shown you know a certain depth of the product today. Obviously, we'd go much longer on a webinar. So you know if if uh, if you're interested in the product, uh, reach out to your sales rep. Uh, we'll certainly uh, answer and answer any further questions. Uh, we do have a few questions that are are out there uh, right now. Um, somebody asked about the workflow for adding 2D outlines and 3D models. Um, when you create a symbol inside of PCB, you then well you have traditional drawing tools to create that symbol. You will then associate and create a footprint and associate and create a some sort of 3D model tied to that. So when you add that symbol, uh, very much like our electrical tool, add that symbol, it understands each step in the process has a certain file that it's going to use that's associated with the original. So that process, um, you know, we can we can show you that if you need to, uh, but it's very easy to go through. We also have a question related to the Altium product. Uh, question is, does SolidWorks PCB replace Altium? If not, where does it fall short? Um, we've been given some 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 information so far about the full breadth of the product. You know, some numbers are 80 to 90 percent of the functionality of Altium Designer. Uh, you know, we can we can get a matrix for you uh, to show you what all those tools and the differences between them. Um, the second half of that question was related to the PCB connector for Altium Designer. There is a cost to that PCB connector, um, and if you're curious about that, again, reach out to your sales rep, and he will certainly give you those numbers so you understand uh, where that fits. And I believe that's all the questions. Oh, oh we got a couple more come here. Tom, you want to take a couple of those? Yeah, I'm reading through them. Um, so does the PCB connector plugin make our Altium look like the one we just demoed? Um, so what it what that connector is doing is it's linking those 3D models still, and it's generating that output. Um, what I haven't seen with the connector is kind of that back and forth communication, um, just because I don't have Altium on my machine. So <laughs> um, once I once I can kind of better understand that interface between Altium. I know right now the output is generating that 3D model with those components. Um, the, the functionality past that, I'm not 100%. Um, but we, like Kev said, we're, we're constantly getting more information on this, and uh, we're, we're looking forward to rolling out as much as we can to you guys. But we are sure that the Ultium Designer interface does will not look like SOLIDWORKS PCB. This will be a plug-in inside of Altium Designer. Um, probably the same icon that we're using here in SOLIDWORKS PCB to push the information back and forth. So it's not like you're you're having to learn this SOLIDWORKS PCB interface because it's some variation from your Altium Designer today. Uh, there's a question about uh, seamless with existing PCB doc and schematic files generated in Altium. Um, this does open up all of the schematic and PCB docs uh, from Altium. Obviously, with limited functionality, we'd have to specifically find out if you were using one of the 10% that's not included, how that uh, movement would work. 
but uh, we can absolutely open up uh, existing Altium uh, schematic and PCV documents. Uh, another question here is the ability to import Cadence or CAD schematics or Allegro layouts even partially. Um, when I look at the uh, import tool, so uh, I don't know the version support, but ORCAD uh, is definitely supported as far as an importer. Um, not sure that does not encompass the Allegro. I don't see that. So just here, here's a quick list of the importers. Uh, Protel, Circuit Maker, Circuit Studio, Eagle, I, I got Mentor. It. I have it on the screen, Kev. Oh, you do? Perfect. Yep. Uh, all right. There you go. Perfect. So there are quite a few importers included in the product. Great. I don't think I see any more coming in. All right. I think that's it. Thanks, yeah, everyone, any other, for uh, yeah, any, coming. Yeah, any other questions, feel free to email either of us or uh, give, give us a ring. Uh, we'll be happy to discuss this further. So thanks for attending, and uh, hope you have a great day. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below.